A very good evening to you and thanks for joining me on yet another life transforming edition of your lo lovely program Questions in the Heart. Very sorry about my voice. I went singing over the weekend, sang from Thursday till Sunday and um, you know, I lost my voice. But thank God I'm still able to speak. I hope you can hear me. By next week I would sound better. How has your day been? I hope you're enjoying the sunshine. Make the most of it. You know, summer is around the corner. Just make the most of the sunshine. Enjoy it. Play out. Take kids out. You know, just have fun. And um, you'll be glad you did. Tonight, on Questions in the Art, we're looking at this topic, domestic violence and abuse. Domestic violence and abuse. The government defined, I mean, domestic violence as any act of threatening behavior violence, abuse of any kind. The government said, the British government, government, I'll quote precisely tonight, said abuse of any kind could be threatening, could be destructive, could be, you know, life-taking. This happens between, it could happen between any two adults who have intimate relationship who've been together, it could happen between family members. It doesn't really have to, you know, have to deal with sexuality or gender. Research shows that women mostly experience domestic violence, while men are perpetrators. Tonight, I've got a specialist in the house of me who will be riding with us on this topic, domestic violence. Any woman can experience domestic violence and abuse, regardless of age, you know, ethnic group, religion, class, mention it, lifestyle. Any woman can experience domestic violence. Tonight, we just want to look at what is domestic violence? What is the cause of domestic violence? How can we deal with domestic violence? How can we save lives of women who are living in a domestic violence and abuse, I mean, abusive relationship. Tonight, this is our topic. And if you're there, you, you're not sure, maybe you are experiencing domestic abuse or not. The signs you're seeing looks like it, but you can't really put your finger on it. Just sit back, listen, and learn. Discover tonight what your relationship is. Abusive or non-abusive relationship. I'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. And before I get you to meet Natalie tonight, I'm going to give you a brief um, history on domestic violence according to the Home Office definition. The Home Office defines domestic violence as at any incident of threatening behavior, violence, or abuse. It could be psychological, it could be physical, it could be sexual, it could be financial or emotional. Like I said the other time, between two others, who have been in intimate, you know, relationship or even family members, regardless of gender or sexuality. Nearly a quarter of adults in England are victims of domestic violence. Although both men and women can be victimized in this way, a greater proportion of women experience all forms of domestic violence and are most likely to be seriously injured or killed by their partner or ex-partners or even their lovers. Domestic violence affects both adults and children within the family. Some 200,000 children in England live in households where there is a risk, a known risk of domestic violence. You know, and a prolonged regular exposure to domestic violence can have a serious impact on children's safety and welfare. 
despite the best efforts of parents to protect them. Analysis of serious case reviews found evidence of past or present domestic violence presents in over half of all the cases, you know, checked. Natalie is nice having you on questions in the ad tonight. We are looking at this topic, domestic violence. You are an expert in this area. Welcome on board. Introduce yourself to us. Thank you. It's um, great to be here. So my name is Natalie Collins. I'm an independent consultant working to end violence against women and equip others to do the same. I've written a youth domestic abuse education programme that I train professionals across the UK to run with young people. And I do lots of work on um, enabling services across the UK to be the best they can. And um, I speak and train and write resources and do lots of stuff to um, work on ending violence against women. Right. It's an honor having your questions that they are tonight. Um, let's kick the ball rolling. What is domestic violence and abuse? Apart from my own definition that I've yeah. given tonight. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that... Um, there's a couple of things within the, the UK definition that, that are missing. So I'd say, firstly, um, so the new definition that came out recently talks about it also being to do with 16 and 17-year-olds and, and wow. even younger. Um, I would say that uh, the, as long as you're able to be in an intimate relationship, whatever age that is, you, you are... Can Experience. You can experience abuse whether you're an adult or a teenager mm. um, and obviously as you said the impact on younger children mm. um, and, and you know we can see domestic violence can also involve wider family members which can be often called honour based violence mm. so um, the involvement of other family members or, or within kind of uh, criminal gangs so it can involve kind of bringing in other other people to, mm. to be part of that abuse and the other the other failing in the definition I'd, I'd say is with the word between yeah. so it yeah. Yeah. It says between two adults, two and, adults yeah. and actually it doesn't happen between two people because that makes it sound re reciprocal yeah. that both parties are just choosing to have a fight mm. and actually the difference between a, an unhealthy uh, argument happening between two people and domestic violence is one person has all the power and one person has no power mm. so it doesn't happen between two people it happens from one person to, to another, another person. person so um, we, we when we start by establishing that domestic violence is about power and control it's about having power over somebody and controlling them and one mechanism is through physical violence which often people would recognize as domestic violence I was gonna ask you does he ha does abuse have to be physical yeah to be an abuse uh, absolutely not so um, physical violence is abuse um, the other forms of abuse is isolation so isolating somebody um, stopping them seeing their friends or family cutting them off from their friends or family mm. um, telling them their friends don't like them anymore um, alienating the mother-in-law um, you know I know mm. that some people don't get on with their mother-in-laws but actually if we love that partner we want them to to have it's relationships with their family yeah. members so isolation um, devaluing somebody putting them down telling them they're worthless or stupid or you useless, um, discouraging them from furthering their education, that, that can be a form of abuse. Financial abuse, so controlling all the finances, um, you know, mm. there, there was quite a well-known case about a woman who earned a lot of money, she was a Vodafone executive, and um, she was murdered by her husband, and it came out wow. that he didn't work, she earned the money, but it got paid straight to him, and he controlled all the money, wow. even though she worked full-time, um, so uh, controlling the finances, expecting us to account for our wearing about at all times so checking mm -hmm. the mileage on the car expecting us to give res receipts for every penny spent and um, so that kind of thing that that's abusive using financial control sexual abuse yeah. so forcing us to have sex forcing us into de de degrading acts or things that we don't want to do threatening to um, post pictures of us on the internet and mm -hmm. um, using using their abuse to stop us leaving so telling us if you leave I'll I'll put these pictures on the internet if you leave mm -hmm. I'll kill you and um, so threatening us using yeah, fear yeah. and intimidation and and a lot of um, a lot of women will say that actually the emotional abuse the not knowing what's going to happen next the treading on eggshells is much worse than the physical violence and mm. some women will say I wish it hit me 
because then mm. I'd know I can leave. Mm. But actually, until he's done that, I can't. And so the, the forms of abuse, um, using the children to abuse us, so turning the children mm. against us, um, threatening to hurt the children unless we do what they want. Um, so, so there's lots of different, different mechanisms that abusers do use to keep well, us controlled. The bottom line here is control. Yeah. Absolutely. If somebody is feeling and control, want to have control over you. Yeah, it's about wanting to have control, and us feeling we have very little power and very little control. Wow. What causes domestic abuse? I think there's there's a lot of misconceptions about the causes. So often mm. people will talk about alcohol being the root cause, yeah. or drug drug use, mm. or unemployment, poverty. Again, is another mm. another thing that's used to justify it. Or childhood. It's what's happened in someone's childhood. It's stress, mental illness. Um, a lot of people would say those are the reasons. The reason but actually, for. we see that alcohol abuse exists in the lives of people who do abuse and people who don't abuse. We see that some children mm. who grow up into adults and have been abused as children become abusive and some don't become abusive so it can't be rooted in those things because those things exist in the lives of both and what we find is where somebody is using abuse in a relationship when they um, deal with their alcohol issues that won't stop them being abusive it'll stop them using alcohol to control but it won't stop them being abusive and so when we look at it it's about power and control as we said previously yeah. but it's based and rooted in beliefs of ownership of owning my partner I have the right to do what I want to my partner because I own her and entitlement I have the right to do what I want I'm entitled so it, so what we see is the roots of abuse are in ownership and entitlement and it's those issues we need to address to the see abuse the feeling ended. of ownership over a partner you feel your partner belongs to yeah. you own him or her yeah and that's the major root of... Ownership is the root. If you look at it like a tree, ownership is the root, entitlement is the trunk, and then the branches of that tree are controlled. Wow. Wow. Interesting. So is domestic violence limited only to certain culture and class? Or is it a general thing? Absolutely not. So we see domestic violence happens in every country in the world. Um, there's different manifestations and there's different justifications. So in one culture, it may be that the only reason that um, an, a partner can be violent is if the partner, their partner's had an affair. In another yeah. culture, it's, well, if she's cooked the dinner wrong. You know, so we have different justifications. And most people would say it's not all right to hit a woman. It's not all right to use violence. Mm. But everybody would also say, unless it's not all right unless unless she does this unless she does that unless I've done this then it's okay and so um, it's it's not limited there are cultural manifestations and different ways that it will look in different cultures yeah. um, you know it happens to the richest places in the richest places and it happens in the poorest places mm -hmm. um, and and actually the, the, it's no discriminator of, of class of race um, definitely gender um, that it's very much um, men who perpetrate abuse against yeah, women yeah, although yeah. it's horrendous if it happens if a man is being abused by a woman that's horrendous and that needs to be addressed and, mm. and men who are experiencing abuse need to be supported too mm. but if we see that abuse is rooted in ownership and entitlement yeah. in every society in the world there are s social mechanisms which promote the ownership of women by wi mm. men and the entitlement of men over women so mm. that's why we see it in every society and we see it to a, a greater extent in society which see um, women as lesser. So the more in unequal a society, yeah. the more abuse of women we will see. Wow, interesting, interesting. What are the tell signs of telltale signs of abuse? How do I know if I'm being abused? Like we, we're talking about why abuse. I mean, could come up. We're talking about what abuse is. Now, someone is in an abusive relationship and she feels everything is all right. How do I know I'm being abused? I mean, I would say for a start that we usually probably aren't thinking that everything's okay, but yeah. what we probably are not thinking is this is abuse. So um, I, I, the work that I do, I work in a professional capacity on ending violence against women, but the reason I started doing this work was because of my own experience of being abused by my ex-husband for a prolonged period of time right. and treated horrifically by him. I, I escaped because my, he assaulted me and my son was born three months premature, and it was because of that, mm. um, that experience of him being born premature that we were moved to a hospital and I was able to separate successfully from oh, wow. him um, and my daughter was two and a half um, yeah. so 
so you know talking from personal experience yeah. and from the experiences of a lot of women mm -hmm. that I've met um, that we know something's wrong but we think that you know there's a misconception that abuse happens to those women you know, the ones that aren't like me. I mean, I was 17 when I met my ex-husband. So oh. it happens to adult women, older women. Mm. It happens to women who are from this social or economic group, mm. from this culture. And so we decide, I'm not one of those women. So then mm. we, we, we justify that behavior and we say, oh, he's not that bad. Because actually we love this person Easy. and we believe that they love us. And so mm. we know that something's not right. But I would say the signs are if we feel like we're not in control, mm -hmm. if we feel like actually we're changing our behavior in order, we're modifying our behavior in order to pacify. To, to, mm. If we're trying to pacify that person, if we're feeling like we need to be less of ourselves in order to make them happy, then we've got a problem because actually love is about loving the person the way they are, the way they are. and not wanting them to change. And you know, if, if they met us and that's who we were, Actually, mm. they shouldn't try and change us because obviously that's the person they love. So if you start having a feeling of, I need to repattern my life, I need to adjust my, my life to, to meet up with his standard, then there is, there, is, there is problem somewhere. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially within the Christian world, um, that's a message that's often given. It's like, you know, women, we need to support our men's ambitions. We need to support them. It's them that need to go out to work. It's them that need to be in charge mm. as, as the head of the household. Yeah. And, you know, if we look at the model of Jesus, Jesus gave a model of giving up power, of honouring women in mm. all of his interactions. I mean, Jesus chose women to be the first witnesses of the resurrection mm. in a society that didn't allow women to be witnesses mm. in court. And so actually whatever we understand of those verses, it can't be about women making themselves less than who God made them to be. Easy. But actually as, a, as a, a Christ, the Christian faith often has been responsible for perpetuating beliefs of ownership and entitlement. Let me ask you, Natalie, in your own case, at what point did you discovered you know what i'm being abused not until um so i did i didn't know it was abuse when he um when he had affairs i didn't know it was abuse when he controlled the finances i didn't know it was abuse when he sexually assaulted me regularly i didn't know it was abuse when he physically assaulted me the point at which i knew it was abuse was about nine months after i left him and i mm. went on a program which showed me what abuse was and then i was like Oh my goodness, wow. I've experienced abuse. abuse. So we can live in that situation and never recognize it as abuse. And the problem is all the services and all the support to help us to deal with what we're going through mm -hmm. are called domestic abuse services. And we think, no, I'm no, no, fine. I don't. I mean, I was uh, it's no more to, to fight. Yeah, it's yeah. No more to, and he's yeah. not that bad. He's not one of those men because also we think that abusers are really monstrous you know that they you can tell you know you meet them and they just don't look mm. right and the reality is they're not they're regular people who are making a choice and i think that's a really important thing that we recognize that abuse is a choice it's not something people can't help it's a choice to do that wow wow okay okay um w will you touch a bit on verbal abuse disrespect will you Will you put them in, in the block of proper abuse? Someone verbally abuses their partner often, you know, disrespect, harassment, threats, physical violence as well. All those are signs and point pointers to domestic violence. Yeah, I mean, physical violence of any sort, even if it's not being physically violent to us, if it's physically violent to property, yeah. um, throwing things, smashing things. And what we find is usually the only things they're smashing are our things. They're nice telly, it's not getting smashed. Oh, no. you know, and so what we find is that there's that much control that they know what things to smash. So the smashing of things, feeling intimidated, feeling fearful, not knowing what we're going to come home to, not knowing what sort of mood they're going to be in when we get home mm. or when they get home and constantly wondering what's going to happen next. I think that that description of treading on eggshells is a very apt one for most people who've experienced abuse. Um, and, and also not feeling I have a choice sexually, that I have to do what I'm told or else he's going to force me. So all things around feeling uh, sexually mm. um, abused, it is massive and it's really, really hard to talk about that stuff because you know, we don't talk about it, do we? So we how do we know what's normal? Wow, okay. So what does domestic violence and abuse do to the victim? 
Well, um, evidence, uh, when we look at kind of the treatment of prisoners of war, mm. um, it, there's a guy called Biderman who did research into the treatment of prisoners of war yeah. and the exact same ways that prisoners of war were tortured in the 1950s are the same uh, tactics that abusers use to abuse women. So we're talking mind control, we're talking um, horrendous mm. mental torture. So the impact of mental torture on anybody is horrendous, whether you're um, in the relationship with that person and potentially that's even worse because this is somebody who's supposed to love me who promised to take care of me who told me they were gonna um, protect me and, mm. and help me and um, so there's a loss of value of feeling like we're not worth anything but at the same time we still usually fight back and I think often when we do fight back we're told well you were stupid yeah, yeah. you know yeah. rather than actually that being honored and going do you know what you're so courageous you're brave because you were willing to, stand to up fight, and fight back, back. Isn't it? so you know so I think there is a loss of value there's a um, feeling isolated so losing contact with family and friends moving us to a new place where we don't know anyone um, I, I, I heard a story about a woman the other day and he'd made her stay in the same clothes for a year and she wasn't allowed to change her clothes wow. for a year incredible you know um, I, we feel like we're going mad um, so um, I know we, a lot of women make lists that he'll say should we go out on Saturday and we'll say oh that'd be lovely and then on Saturday we say so we're going out and he'll say I never said it what would you mean going out why would you be going out well you said we were going to go out wow. so you know I know women who've recorded the man saying we're going out and then playing it back and he'll say yeah I did say it really and it's all about making us feel like we're going crazy wow. and so we're left feeling totally like we're crazy we might have been diagnosed by the doctor because we go to the doctor and they tell us we're depressed they don't tell us we've got living with an abuser disorder do they they say mm. get on some tablets so so there's a feeling of going mad of, of not liking ourselves of being fearful of being being just totally degraded the way sexual violence degrades us and makes mm. us feel worthless and it's really important to understand that sexual violence isn't about lust or desire it's about control and degradation wow. and, and destroying another person Wow. So yeah, so we just become a shell of ourselves. We, be, you know, for me, I became like a walking dead person. Wow. I hated myself. I was barely surviving. I'd self harm. I felt suicidal. I was, I was, I, I just didn't function on anything other than a kind of I've just got to get through this day. And I think that's the thing we don't recognise it's abuse, and we're just trying to get through till tomorrow. Mm. We're just trying to get, and we think this is our life forever because they've made us believe that we can't survive on our own. So we believe it. Mm. Wow, interesting. So why do women stay in abusive relationship if a woman is going through all this you're mentioning and yet the courage to say, you know what, I've had it. I'm out of it. It's not there. Why would a woman want to stay with a man who wants to control your life, who doesn't want you to be who you are, you know, who disrespects do all sorts of things we're mentioning tonight to you? Why would a woman stay in an abusive relationship? I mean, I think partly it's the wrong question because actually we should be asking why doesn't he stop abusing her? Because what we do is we've put the responsibility onto the woman who's not doing anything wrong and we've taken the responsibility off the abuser who's choosing to continue to hurt a woman. Mm. So I think part of it is about reframing our questions and thinking actually, I mean, I've never, um, you know, when I go to parties and, you know, say, oh, what do you do for a job? Mm. And I say, oh, I, I work on ending domestic violence and they'll say, oh, those women, wow. those women gluttons for punishment. Why don't they just leave? And I kind of feel like saying, well, if I could have just left, Mm. I would have just left. Mm. But actually, it's so much harder than that because uh, it's, it's not just about the death of a relationship, but it's about the death of all our dreams. You know, That's we meet this person and we love them. They might be the father of our children, mm. um, you know, and we want that person to change. We want them to be everything that they promised they were. Mm. And so we're, we love them and not in some sadistic way, but we genuinely love this yeah. person. We believe they don't mean it. They don't mean it. And this mm. time's going to be different, but it never, it never is. And so what we find is that we, we also have financial dependency on this because actually mm. he, he will ensure that we're financially dependent. So actually, if we leave, we might not have access to any money. Mm. He might have convinced us to claim benefits we're not entitled to or other illegal activities. Mm. So then we feel like if we leave, he threatens, I'm going to report you to the police things around getting us hooked on drugs so there's lots of mechanisms that 
um, men who abuse were used to keep us mm. from leaving mm. um, but also we've been told we're not going to cope and we live in a society what is the value of single mothers in society mm. do we value them as highly mm. as married married women no, no. and mm. so we, we don't want to be the one of those of not wanting to be a single mom yeah the fear of you know I mean if you just ask somebody why have you not left a job where you were being bullied by a manager and people will say my status my financial security all those things and then when you look at actually somebody who's married it looks it's like you, you're giving up certainty for uncertainty yeah actually you know and all that we don't see freedom is not a tangible thing that you can touch and feel and so we we don't know what it means to be free because wow. we've been so so tied up so we've got to you know we've got to talk people talk to people about what what does it mean to value wow. ourselves what does it mean to what does freedom look like mm. um you know and actually women are most at risk of being murdered at the point of leaving and for the the 18 months wow. after so actually when we say to somebody you just leave we're actually saying you might be risking murder and it's mm. why safety planning and being clear about how we leave safely is really important mm. um, and it's and it's really important that we know that there is help out there there is support there yeah, is place we I, can I go i think one of the reasons why someone in, a, in an abusive relationship wouldn't want to leave is you, you want to think okay if i leave him now what next yeah if you get what i mean if i leave now what next that 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 question is is always there on our minds and another thing is we keep thinking it will change let me give them give them yeah. another chance it will change another chance it will change can an abuser ever change natalie i am um, people always ask me this and i would say that if I, I if we believe abuse is a choice which it is we have to believe that abusers can choose to stop doing it so in essence Yes, mm. they, can change, they can change, but however, we live in a society which disables change. So we live in a society where men can access pornography, which says women are there Easy. to be used. You know, we live in a society which where men get paid more than women, which says women aren't as important yeah. as men. And, so, and, that, and, and we live in a society which promotes masculinity as something which is being strong and being, being tough and not crying and being angry. And so while we promote that as the best version of masculinity, we're going to wow. continue to produce and um, men who abuse and we're not giving men many incentives not to mm -hmm. so um, men can change but they need an intervention of a perpetrator program so men aren't going to change just because one day they wake up and say today's the day chance, yeah change. actually there's they need professional intervention they need um they need support from a professional and, and, and professional intervention also involves working with a woman and ensuring her safety and mm. um, so there's, there's perpetrator programs running across the country not as many as there should be um but but there are resources um to help men but actually one of the sure things is that if a man believes there'll be no consequences to their behavior they won't change because why would they? And so there needs to be consequences um, and they need to believe that the woman is going to leave and know that to be true. Oh, wow, wow. Are you in an abusive relationship? Is your partner controlling you? Is there disrespect? Physical violence, verbal abuse, sexual emotional abuse, and all sort. Is that what you're going through tonight? We're going to short break. And when we come back, the studio line will open. You will be able to ask Natalie your questions tonight. And we'll be able to tell you more about domestic violence. Don't go nowhere. But we're saying something backstage when we're on break. And I would want you to talk about that briefly, Natalie, before I go on to my next question. We're talking about women trying to make their men feel important in order to have our way i want to do this but if i tell him that's what i'm doing he's not going to support me so i'd rather say okay you do it and i'm still going to be the one to do it but just you know let people see see it as if he's the one doing it so i can have my way yeah but does that really make sense well that's it it's the idea of saying men need to think it's their idea and it's your job 
as a woman to let him think it's his idea. And I think it, it, it insults men because it says they're too stupid to know what, what ideas are their own and what aren't. Which, you know, I believe that I honour and, and think men are awesome. I've got an awesome husband now. I got remarried to a great, great guy oh, who's, yes, who's yeah. amazing. And, you know, I, I've got a son and I'm, I really believe in, in good guys and the importance of good men mm. standing up and, and speaking out and, and challenging other men who are abusive and, mm. and honouring women. Um, but what we, what we see is then the w women have learned the only way to gain any power is to manipulate and to deceive in order to get power. And, um, you know, and actually, don't, didn't we see that in the fall? Yeah. Didn't we see that? Yeah. The, the deception and manipulation. And we see in Genesis 3.16 that, that God says that a consequence of the fall will be male domination. It says your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. That's mm -hmm. not a command that God desired for that to be the way mm -hmm. because he made creation in a way that said men and women were equal and had equal power. And, you know, we see in Jesus yeah. the destruction of the curse, don't we? And we see that actually as Christians, we need to be modeling lives of equality and of, of honoring one another and of saying, do you know what? Like, if I've got a great idea, my husband's going to be happy for me to Isn't have that it? idea. And actually, well, you have the idea, you, you can't even share it because you're thinking, oh, he's going to be intimidated. He's, yeah. He's gonna and actually, surely he's going to love you because you're saying, you know, you're, he's, he's going to honor everything that God made you to be just as you will honor everything that God made him to but be. But we don't have too much of those men around these days. Well, I think, you know, we, we've got to model it. We've got to raise our sons differently. We've got to, we've got to model it in the way that we live and in, with our relationships. You know, my husband, at the minute, he's full-time at home and he looks after the house and, and our business and, and the kids so that I can do the work I do. Mm. Um, you know, but then actually there's, other, there's, there's lots of men who, who are sacrificially going out to work in order to provide for their families. So mm. it's not that one model's right or wrong, but it's about how do we model a relationship of equality? Yeah. How can we model what it means to be living in, in mutuality and respect for one another? Mm, mm. Well, I, I know men are out there tonight thinking, what, 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 are, what are they talking about? Men are abused too. What about female perpetrators of abuse? Because I know people be thinking, you're talking about women being abused. Men are abused too. Absolutely, and I think we need to offer good support to men who are experiencing abuse. Um, but uh, there's various things we need to consider. So there are, there are various. There's evidence that some perpetrators will pretend to be victims in wow. order to further abuse their partner. Wow. So it's really important that we look at what is actually going on in a relationship. I know a church where they were supporting a man who was um, disclosing that he was experiencing abuse, and they came on training. And as a result of coming on the training, they realised that. Yeah. She was the one that was being abused. And so it's really important that we look at where's the power and control, who's actually got power, who's being abusive who's in this situation. And, and we also need to look at statistically within the UK, a lot of the men who are abused are in same-sex relationships, so the perpetrator then is still a man. Um, wow. so, so looking at that, and also I think... Um, there, there are, there are um, women who abuse, but statistically within the UK alone, um, 112 women a year are murdered and 22 men a year are murdered. So we're looking at a very different picture in terms of um, severe violence and the risk of murder. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to note all those things, but there are support services out there for men. Um, the Men's Advice Line, which people, if they type into Google, will come up and they can access support through that um, for, their, for their situation. So the, the ratio of women being abused to men is quite really low. Globally, it's about 95% to 5%. So 95% women, 5% men. Within the UK, it's... Um, it's less than that, but where um, so it's about 85% of um, cases where somebody's been assaulted more yeah. than four times, it's a woman. So there's definitely a sense in which often men leave sooner. But again, you know, if if we're looking again at masculinity and that to be a man means to be strong, if you are then experiencing abuse from a female partner, how disempowering that is and how hard it is to admit mm. because actually you've been told that you're not allowed to be weak if you're a man, mm -hmm. and it's hard for women to admit too but there's additional mm. pressures and difficulties for men that need to be, they need additional support with. Wow, this is the bit that interests me most tonight, the question that interests me most tonight. Are children affected by abuse? 
Yes, in um, in the UK, um, child abuse a definite one of the one of the definitions of child abuse is witnessing domestic violence from adult parents. So not even um, kind of experiencing violence to themselves, but being well, in a home it. where yeah. there is violence has an impact on children, whether they're even in their different room. Um, one um, woman I know, her her daughter had um was six when she left and she thought that her daughter hadn't been impacted by the abuse and when she, her daughter was about 14 she said to her you know you were okay weren't you you were okay growing up it, it, you were little it didn't notice it and she said mum you know i used to camp under my bed um and and you used to put me in bed and she would said yeah and she said that's because i knew that if i ended up in my bed in the morning that you were safe but if i was under the bed it meant that you might not be and at six five four that little girl had known that she had to test whether it was safe you know so the impact on children is massive um from the women who are pregnant are, are very high risk so a 30 percent of domestic violence starts in pregnancy and mm. um, so pregnancy is a really high risk factor so a lot of women miscarry because men abuse them mm. when they're pregnant and um, a lot of women are forced to have abortions um mm. So, and then, then the children become a very, a, a tool the abuser uses. Um, and a lot of people would say, well, just because he's abused the mother doesn't make him a bad father. Exactly. But actually, by disrespecting the mother of the children, he's being a bad father. Because mm -hmm. the only way somebody can be a good father is by honouring the mother of the children and respecting mm -hmm. her and also respecting the children. Um, and, and actually, a lot of fathers who are separated from their children will continue to pursue access to further abuse the woman mm -hmm. and so the evidence shows that where the man is not being part, um, treated on an intervention program yeah. for for his behavior mm -hmm. um, it's not usually safe for the children to have access yeah until I was gonna that. ask you that should children have access to a parent who has been you know abusive yeah and I would say uh, there a lot of interventions need to take place because those children are at risk of, of serious harm including murder so there are men who've killed their children on access visits wow. um, because this ownership idea extends to their children so they believe that they own their children and if I can't have them they're going to be dead will. yeah and and so that when we see um, stories of men killing their children um you know on the on the news it's about the fact that they wanted they there will be domestic violence in every one of those cases because so it's not advisable for parents who are abusive to have access to their children no and often the family courts will give access about 70 percent of abusive fathers get access through the courts so it's very difficult because family courts don't necessarily have the training or the awareness to know how to deal with it appropriately mm. Okay, okay, okay. What can people do if they know someone who is being abused or, you know, always choosing to abuse their partner? What can people around them do to help? I think the most important thing to do is that we do the opposite of what the abuser does. So not just say the opposite. So if he says stay and we say leave, we're still doing the same as the abuser because we're still telling them what to do. And so rather than trying to rescue them and tell them, you've got to leave and shake them until they do what we want, we actually need to on, d show them that they're valuable. So when he invalidates them, we need to validate them. When he disempowers them, we need to empower them. But wh wherever possible, if there are children, the safety of the children has to be first. And if there's children at risk, we need to be reporting that to services and, and getting intervention for those children and for the woman. Um, but, w but what we need to do is we need to support that person and, and give them the ability to, to recognize the abuse so a really useful thing for anybody who's supporting someone to do is to gain more knowledge about abuse mm -hmm. so to um, get read books the best book is by a guy called Lundy Bancroft and mm -hmm. um, so any of his books are really helpful so gaining more knowledge so that then when we speak to them we can support them out of a, a heart that knows the right things to say well that's that's serious tonight. Well, surely churches are usually supportive of women, aren't they? We, we'd, it'd be lovely to think that, wouldn't it? It'd be lovely to think that, but unfortunately, um, some of the theology around headship and submission, some of the theology around women being less valuable than men in, in churches, um, is used to keep women in abusive situations. And even if we're not necessarily taught 
taught explicitly that we've got to stay, yeah. often we believe, well, I've got to forgive him because mm. Jesus said forgive. Mm. Um, we think that divorce isn't an option and the, the, from the pulpit they teach that divorce is, that is terrible. Mm. But actually, do you know what's more terrible than divorce? It's men abusing their wives. Wow. What's more terrible than divorce is men murdering their wives. I'd rather that a woman <laughs> was able to reach safety and has to separate than is dead. Mm. You know, because Jesus came to bring fullness of life. Mm. And actually, if we're not living in fullness of life as Christians, then yes. there's something wrong, That's isn't the there? So, yeah, so churches often don't, don't do the right thing, but it's often not out of a bad heart. It's not that they deliberately want to damage women, but that they don't know any different. So there's a really good organisation called Restored, which has lots of resources and mm. a church pack and training for churches that can equip them to more, more fully understand the issues. Mm. So it's really important that churches is learn that this is an important issue and learn how to address it appropriately and marriage counseling was never an appropriate intervention for um, a, a family where there's abuse and mm. neither is anger management so it's really important that we understand the way to support families appropriately so there's there's I, I am help online that, that people can access so how, how do you think the church can respond to this um, I think learning more learning more and getting knowledge from people who know what they're talking about, um, re-looking at our theology. So there's kind of three types of theology we need to address. Theology of power, theology of gender, and theology of relationships. How do we think about power? Do we think that the person who's the most important is the most powerful? Or do we have the model of Jesus, which was servant-hearted leadership? How do, how do we model men and women? Do we see men and women as equal? How do we look at relationships, forgiveness, repentance? Mm -hmm. So it's really important that we examine our theology and, and create a safe space and learn more about that. So learning, learning and understanding that we're not the experts and that there's limitations to what we can do. Wow. Yeah. And I'd say primarily we've got to believe somebody. If they say they're experiencing abuse, we don't say, I don't think it's that bad. Are you mm -hmm. sure it's really abuse? We say, I believe you. How, what can I do to help you? Isn't it? Isn't it? Wow. So what do we do then to help children make good choices in relationship? Because like you said, abuse is a choice. And um, choosing the right person in a relationship is a choice as well. So how do we help these young people to make right decisions, to make right choices in relationship? I believe that will you know, bring down the level of violence and abuse going around these days. Yeah, I mean we start with young children teaching them that girls and boys are equal. So how often do we say to our boys, don't cry, don't be a girl? How often do we make the worst thing a boy can be a girl? So we start by how we treat boys and girls. Do we say that, that girls, you can't hit girls? Do we say that they're weak and, you know, and it's wrong that we don't hit anybody? You know, do we put our girls in pretty dresses and say you can't get dirty? Do we tell our boys they've got to be big and strong? Because we're starting those belief systems that girls and boys are, are, are that different, you know, when actually we're both human, we're all human beings. So it's partly about how we raise our children and how we treat them to respect one another and um, how we teach them to be good friends so you know I, my children are 10 and 7 and you know I say to my daughter you know you want friends who are happy for you to have other friends not ones who are jealous who say you know you're only allowed to be my friends you know you want friends who are gonna want you to have as many friends and are happy for you mm -hmm. you know I tell my son your friends should be happy when you get a, a new toy not tell you they want it from you so it's mm -hmm. about how how we encourage our children to form healthy friendships because it's those friendships that then develop into adult relationships or intimate relationships and then we talk we have to model in our relationships with our partner mm. and and in the way we treat other people respect and honoring them because the one sure thing is that if we have, have experienced if we're in a situation where abuse is happening that's going to impact our children in one way or another mm. so actually respecting how do we honor and, and model respect for relationships as, as a husband and wife and how do we intentionally do that for our children how do we have conversations about relationships mm. um, and, and talk to them about what Jesus did and how Jesus lived his life mm. before we go to that like Natalie how easy was it for you to move on from your abusive relationship to another relationship well 
horrendously difficult in one sense. I won't lie and say, oh, it was wonderful, it was really easy. Mm. I, was, I was really traumatised both emotionally and spiritually and physically by all the stuff that I'd been through. I had a very sick child. My son was in hospital for five months. Mm. Um, my daughter was traumatised. So I had to go through a lot of counselling. I had a lot of prayer. I couldn't have made it through without God. You know, like truly my, my, um, my entire life and who I am is because of Jesus. Mm. Um, but actually it is possible you know I, I sit here as somebody who has made it through and it's tough and it requires a lot of work and a lot of it's really challenging but actually it's possible to move on and to form new relationships you know some women think well no one else will want me mm. I'm going to be, have to be single forever do you know what there are so many good guys out there mm. um, and actually if we believe that there's nobody better we're not gonna we're never gonna get rid of this one and mm. so I think it's about you know, it's about recognising it's hard. It's really hard, both emotionally, physically, spiritually, but it is possible. And for me, my life is awesome. I have an awesome husband. Mm. My kids are awesome. My son's totally healthy. And my mm. life is amazing now. But, you know, if somebody had told me back then what I was going to look like now, I wouldn't have believed it. Um, but, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow. It's been educative, informative tonight. We've got a few minutes to go. For someone who is coming out of an abusive relationship and is willing to go into another relationship, what would you advise she looks out for? I think we've got to be careful about saying if you get all the signs right, then you won't ever get another abuser because actually one abuser does things a completely different way from another abuser. Mm. Um, so I would say the most important things are to take things slow so you can really get to know somebody. So behaviour modification, if somebody modifies their behaviour, can they can do that for about 18 months successfully? So mm. really, if, you, if you've known someone for over two years, the likelihood is you're going to know them quite well. So I think mm. taking things slow... Um, not committing too quickly um, and thinking about what we value. So what are our values and what are the uncompromisable values we want in someone else? Wow. We've got to go tonight. It's a pleasure having your questions in there, Adnanly. I know people out there were busy listening to what we were talking about. You've educated, I mean, you've been able to educate me tonight and I'm sure they've been educated as well. Uh, well, till I come your way, same time, same station next week with another interesting episode. Log on to our website, www.questionsinair.com to catch up with this episode and some other interesting episodes. Uh, we've got um, an immigration seminar coming up on the 18th of May. I think the details have been, you know, played out to us on the screen. We'll bring you more information on that soon. I pray I'm able to come to you next week Tuesday with a clearer voice. If you are in any abusive relationship or you know anyone who has been abused or you know anyone who is planning or who is abusing someone and kids are involved, please report it. Don't die in an abusive relationship. You have a glorious future ahead of you. Access the airplanes available and live a joyful, fulfilled life. God bless you. See you next week. Thanks, Natalie. Thank you. Nice having you.